Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. Um, we at this Lent have been following the story through the Gospel of John of <clears throat> Jesus' uh, trial and leading to his crucifixion. We're taking a big step back now and, and going backwards to the Palm Sunday procession. Uh, sometimes we've uh, combined the two stories, starting with Palm Sunday and then having the Passion read as well. And that's to prevent us from going, Yay, Jesus is King! Yay, Jesus is raised! And not actually going through the, the, the most significant part of our faith of Jesus going and dying on the cross for us. Um, we are going to just focus on Palm Sunday today. So um, I encourage you to come to Monday Thursday worship, which is going to be at Grace Memorial Episcopal at 6. And just to keep you on your toes, Good Friday is a different time at 7, and that's going to be here. And we have a special choir, a community choir, that's going to lead us in a cantata, and that's going to tell the story of Jesus' crucifixion. So I hope you can make that as well. And of course, we will um, we'll put that out online too if you can't make it. Um, and then Easter Sunday, we'll have a sunrise service at 6.30, our regular times at 8 and 9.15, and there'll be Holy Communion at all three services. So, um, and in case um, you don't know, we are fasting from Communion for the three weeks before Easter so we can focus on the meaning of Communion during that time, uh, that we normally distribute to you. So that's kind of our plans for church this week, this Holy Week. Zach? Oh, what? Come on up, Jack. Sadie and Hallie, come on up. And you've got your fall branches today? Oh, not sure. Oh, just leave that? Okay. Just so long as you come on. Good to see you. Yeah, we're going to do something kind of funny today. Do you know what these are for? Do you know what these are for? They're for tickling your neighbor. <laughs> so this is Tickle Your Neighbor Sunday in church. Do you think so? No. No. But we are remembering a very special day in the life of Jesus when he came to Jerusalem and they recognized he was king. And they were celebrating the Messiah, the king is here. And putting palm branches down and him riding a donkey uh, over them was a way of acknowledging him that he is their future king. And he's coming to be uh, installed as king. Kind of like, um, I don't, you ever heard about like putting the red carpet out? So when they get for special occasions and to honor people, they're not any more special than us, but they're honoring people. They put out a red carpet, and then only the people that are being honored are supposed to walk on that carpet. Or, have you ever been to a wedding? Yeah? Sometimes, there'll be a white runner, it's called. And it's like a carpet, except for it's very fragile. And you roll it down that center aisle, and the bride is the only one that walks on that, that comes first. She walks on it first. So that's like a special honor. That's what we're doing. We're remembering how Jesus was honored. And you get to help us do that. So it's a kind of an exciting celebration. <laughs> it's like it's like a more than a birthday, right? Are you guys excited about birthdays? Okay. Good. So we are going to um, go to the back of the church when it's time to sing our song. And we're gonna wave our palm branches as we all sing together. And then when we get to the front, we're you guys are going to sing a special song for all of us that, that Liesl and Christy are going to help lead you with, okay? And that will bring us 
much joy. But first, we're going to listen to the story for today. So I'm just going to sit up here with you while we listen to what that day was like. Okay? But we'll start now with all of us saying together, uh, or responding, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. All right, now we're going to listen to that, how that day was described in the Gospel of John. And Gene's going to, going to read that story for us. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> All right, now before, um, well actually, let's say this prayer, and then I've got a, a favor to ask. Okay, let's pray together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, now I got a favor to ask. I need two <coughs> volunteers to help us. There's there's a donkey, and then there's Jesus. So I'm wondering if any of you would be willing to be a donkey today. <laughs> All right, I tell you what, I will be a donkey. <laughs> somebody to be Jesus and ride on my back. <laughs> any, any volunteers? Okay. Allie, what do you think? No? <laughs> Jack? No? Zach?
we are going to sing. Everybody's going to sing. Stand. Wave your palms. The words are going to be all up on the screen. Of glory, love, and honor. And I am going to forward. Okay, come on, kids. Let's go in the back. I'm just going to sit here. It's too hard to get in and out. Thanks.
God of honor and celebration, <coughs> together we cry, Hosanna, Hosanna to your, your Son, who rode willingly and bravely into Jerusalem. Hear us as we celebrate your anointed one, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I was asked again to volunteer as the WK assistant golf coach this spring. And it basically means that I am a young golfer's parent with privileges. <laughs> At golf meets, I don't have to stay 20 yards from the golfers, but I can walk the course right along with them and encourage them, give them some advice if they need it, or tell them it's okay to cry. <laughs> I also teach them some of the basics of good golf during practice when I can. I think probably the best thing I can teach them is to not be so concerned about trying hard to win, but to stay focused on one shot at a time. In my experience, the less emphasis you put on the outcome of winning in golf, the more chance you actually have of actually winning. If you become preoccupied with the end result, whether you win or not, you lose focus and end up sabotaging any chance you had of doing your best. I know this from a lot of experience. <laughs> I even came up with an acronym for the kids. FOCUS. That's our theme for the year. FOCUS. Forget, observe, commit, unwind, and swing. And one of the things I love about golf is that what is true in golf is sometimes true in life as well. If we stay focused on the present moment and the next <laughs> right thing, we can leave the results to God. John describes this in his telling of the story of Palm Sunday. The crowds are cheering because they have heard about Jesus who had raised Lazarus from the dead. Surely he was the Messiah, the one who would free them from their oppression of Rome, just like Moses had freed his people from Pharaoh. Even the Pharisees who opposed Jesus thought, wow, there's nothing we can do to stop him now. Look, the whole world has gone after him. They're all getting caught up in what they believe will be the <coughs> Excuse me, the end result of Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. Everyone's getting excited, except for Jesus. <coughs> Jesus doesn't get ahead of himself. He doesn't get wrapped up in visions of a future victory, but he stays in the moment, knowing that this apparent worldly success isn't going to last long. Jesus says, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus resists the temptation to get caught up in the excitement about what the future might hold. Doesn't mean there isn't a great future, but it's just not the one they expect. Now, the Gospel of John, I, I happen to think about, doesn't have a temptation scene at the beginning of his Gospel, like the other Gospels all do, with Jesus going out into the wilderness to be tempted. John doesn't describe that. I think this, right now, is Jesus' temptation in the Gospel of John. In Matthew and Luke, the devil shows Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and says, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will be all yours. Notice that, that the devil is like, See this glorious future that I'm offering you. And then Jesus responds, saying, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only Him. Jesus answers with 
and present tense. He doesn't argue with the devil about what that future may or may not be. He says what matters is now, and it's worshiping God and serving only Him. That's what matters. That's where our focus needs to stay. Not on some imagined future, either good or bad, but on faithfully serving in the present. Jesus tells us this directly. He says, right after our lesson ends, the light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light. Believe in the light so that you may become children of light. Walk in the light. In this present moment, don't put your, your hope in some future outcome. No matter how attractive that future may seem to you. Likewise, don't fear what the future might bring, no matter how fearful that future may seem to you. We only have now. Believe in the light. And even if we die, like a seed planted in the ground, our life, our love, will still bear much fruit. Our job is to stay focused, not to worry about that. To live in the light while it is day. To become children of the light. So this acronym I came up with for our young golfers, I hope might be able to help us in our own faith journey. We need to focus in order to, or so that we don't lose our way. First, same thing, forget. Now in golf, this means forget that bad shot that you just took. And that shot is done and feeling bad and angry about it isn't going to help you make the next shot. It actually makes you more likely that it's going to be worse. And so I've seen the kids get out there and they swing and inevitably duck one just a few yards up. Observe what 
is. Next is commit. Now in golf, I teach the kids that once you've observed all the hazards and what's going to affect your shot, decide what your target's going to be so that you can commit to that shot. Now if your mind is still on all those hazards and obstacles, you are not going to make a good shot. In fact, one of those hazards is called a sand trap. And you don't want to be in a sand trap. But if you're sitting up there at your stroke and you're thinking, I don't want to be in that sand trap, guess where you're likely to end up? In the sand trap. You've already taken into account that hazard. That's not your target. You can forget about that. Now focus on your target. In the same way, we need to commit to the next right thing that is before us. And not keep our eyes on all the hazards and all the things that might turn us up. And one of those things is not knowing for sure what that next right thing might be. And so we continue to wait and mull and not end up doing much of anything. We need to do what we think is best with what we know right now. And if we learn something new in the future, we'll take a different step. All right? Luther said most famously, we must sin boldly in loving our neighbor as ourselves. Now this sometimes gets put on coffee mugs and t-shirts. Sin boldly. And it kind of feels like, uh -huh. <laughs> Luther's talking about, don't worry if it's exactly the next right thing. It's okay, you don't have to be perfect for there to be progress. You're going to make mistakes, but don't let that stop you from trying. And if you are sincerely trying to love God and love your neighbor, well then you are going to learn and you're going to grow and you're going in the right direction. You don't have to worry about it. But we do have to commit to doing something. And then we have unwind. Now in the game of golf, this means relax. Because if you are trying to play a game of golf, and you are gripping the club really tightly, and you're really, I've got to control this, and it's not going to go well. You're not going to hit it very well. You have to go and practice enough so that you trust your swing. So you don't have to control, okay, let's see, I need to break my wrist at exactly this point. You just, you swing, and you swing, and you swing, and you get coaching so that it's a good swing, and you practice, and then it becomes automatic. Now, I'm playing around with this, but I would say in, the, in our life that that is the equivalent of prayer. That you don't just try really hard to pray, and pray the right things, and, and God, may, things will happen for you. Prayer is a habitual practice of being in the presence of God. Knowing God is with you, where, and you can relax because you know God is guiding you and supporting you along with everybody else that is on this journey with you. And it's, not some, it's something that isn't just done at one particular stage in your life of faith. It is just like that practice, just like that relaxing. It's your whole time. It's everything. Relax. Be in the presence of God. Pray always. So that anxiety doesn't drive you through the day. But you are drawn forward into life by the love of God. And next, in golf we take our swing. In life, we serve. Jesus said, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Jesus doesn't say, My Father will honor the one who's successful. My Father will honor the one who does great things. My Father will honor the one who never makes a mistake. The one who serves. Jesus calls us to this focus. While the world is distracted with so many imagined futures, either good or, it seems lately, just one bad thing after another, what's going to happen next? Jesus is a 
about living fully in this present moment right now. And invites us to let our light shine with Him right now. And I tell you, I really debated about this acronym and sharing it with y'all because, you know, I don't know how many golfers there are with you. I don't even know if it's helpful if you are a golfer. <laughs> if my acronym isn't helpful to you, just forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Observe what is helpful. Commit to that. Unwind by bringing it all together in prayer and serve. As you have been called, becoming more and more a child of light that you already are. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we meditate on the word now through song as we sing together, let all things now live. <coughs> Heidi, Ruth, 
Jerry, Roger, Don, and Beth. And we pray in thanksgiving and your continued care for Kay, Lonnie, Carol, and Clara. And we lift up to you our friends in need. Nancy, Trudy, Charlotte, and Lance. And the many people, Lord, who are grieving the death of loved ones, we know that you are close and carrying them. We pray especially for Sherry, for the family of Brad, and for this congregation. For the Hinkles and the Blessed Sisters family, Joanne's family. For Dorothy, the Kallstroms, the, their great niece's husband, Riley. And for our community and for our neighbors, family, Ed. With the angels in all creation, we look forward to the day when we will join with them in declaring Hosanna to the Son of David in heaven together with an unending joy. When your healing is complete, and when we know that blessed is all who come in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we pray as our Lord has invited us, pray along with him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We now reflect on the meaning of communion as Carol leads us in a musical meditation. <coughs>
singing the last two verses of All Glory, Lord, and Honor. 